There is no shortage of gaming cases, especially from the mid-tower size group. So how does one stand out in this category and be a cut above the rest? It's a tough thing to do, but Antec with their NX410 is attempting to do just that. Let's dive in and see what this is all about right here, right now on Robitech. Okay, how many mid-tower gaming cases can you name in under a minute? Ready, set, go. I don't know, like the Corsair. Point is, there's a ton. How does one stand out in an area crowded with so many mid-tower gaming cases already? Well, Antec and their NX Gaming series of cases are attempting to do just that. Now let's take a gander at the outside of the case, shall we? The Antec NX410 is a sleek looking airflow case made from steel and plastic, just like most cases. And like most of those cases, it comes in your typical black or white color scheme. And it sells for an MSRP of $79.99 and is an Amazon exclusive in the US according to Antec.com. Now it stands at 19.09 inches tall with a depth of 15.35 inches and a width of 8.27 inches, which compares to like a Corsair 4000D, a Fractal Mesh Fi C, or the Lee & Lee Landcool 2 mesh, give or take an inch or so on all sides. Now it comes in at a decent weight of 11.24 pounds. So about as much as, you know, like a cat or like a really fat hamster. It has a three quarter front mesh panel, a top magnetic mesh cover, along with a bottom mesh panel just under where the PSU will sit for optimal airflow all around. You also have your tempered glass side panel with an awesome little handle on it, which you can use to open the panel and you can just literally basically slide it right off. It's quite the cool little thing. The Antec NX410 does come with three ARGB fans in a configuration of two 140 millimeter fans up front and one 120 millimeter fan in the rear. Always great to see a case manufacturer throw in some ARGB fans. And spoiler alert, we would have loved to show them off, but the LEDs didn't work for us out of the box. And Antec doesn't really have much documentation on this, nor do they sell any replacement 140 millimeter ARGB fans for us to use, so yeah. So after our build and testing, we had to swap out all the fans because you have to have matching and working fans, right? Oh, and did I mention you couldn't use the 140 millimeter fans without the paired 120 millimeter? That's right. The 120 millimeter fan is like the key to the whole thing. All of the functionality for like every single bit of RGB. Oh, and by the way, it's Molex. That's right. The fan is Molex. So in this case, our fan's Molex cable was damaged. And because it was damaged, we got no RGB on any of the fans at all. And there's no way to fix it at all. Not something I really get, not one bit. Now, back to the features. Now the front panel has your power button, LED control button to control the color scheme of the fans when they work, along with one USB 3.0 port and two USB 2.0 ports. You also have an HD audio jack in the front for both mic and headset for plugging into the front panel. No front panel USB-C though. But for $79.99 for this Amazon exclusive, you have to cut out something, right? Not really, I feel like Antec missed the market of having a front panel USB-C port. Maybe they could have just taken out the ARGB LED button uh, as ours didn't work and maybe put it there. Hey Antec, just saying. Now inside the Antec NX410, you have support for up to six fans, three 120 millimeter or three 140 millimeter up front, two 120 millimeter or two 140 millimeter up top, and one 120 millimeter in the rear. You're able to put a 360 millimeter AIO slash radiator in the front, a 280 millimeter AIO or slash radiator on the top, and a 120 millimeter slash radiator in the rear. No surprise here for what you can fit. Remember, if you are using an AIO in the front, you have to be aware of GPU clearances because they can become less. Now let's talk about GPU clearances. You have a max length of 335 millimeters for your GPU, so it can fit GPUs the size of like an EVGA RTX 3090 FTW, which comes in at 311 millimeters. If you're not gonna use an AIO and you're gonna use an air cooler, you have a max height of 168 millimeters on that, now, for your motherboard support, you can fit mini ITX, micro ATX, and ATX boards inside of the Antec NX410. This case does not have EATX motherboard support, which, meh. But Antec knows, with this price point, what market they're going for. And I can see why EATX support isn't there. 
Now for storage, you do have plenty of options. You have three spots to mount two and a half inch SSDs and a tray underneath the PSU shroud that supports a three and a half inch slash two and a half inch SSD. So it's convertible. Now, if you're using that hard drive tray, you may run into an issue if you're also using three fans or a 360 millimeter AIO up front. Now, Roby, what can I do with power in my system? Well, don't worry. The Antec NX410 supports up to a full-size ATX PSU with a max clearance of 165 millimeters. So PSUs like the EVGA 1000 G5 and even the EVGA 1000 G6 will fit in here. Now, what I found funny is that Antec's own 80 plus platinum or titanium PSUs will not fit in here as they are all 170 millimeters or greater in length. But again, Given the price point and target audience, you're likely not gonna be putting like a 1300 watt monster in this case. So overall, the case doesn't seem to be too bad. We would have liked to have seen the fans work out of the box. I mean, that seems kind of, you know, standard, but the lack of USB-C doesn't do the case any favors. And with two USB 2s instead of at least two USB 3.0 or higher, and only one USB 2 and maybe like a USB-C, we feel like the case could have had way more value. But enough about looking at the potential. Let's do a build and we can put our thoughts to paper. Videotape. Bytes. I don't know, what, whatever this is. You, you know what I'm saying. Anyway, let's build. This is the uh, i5-11600K. We're using the RG Strix Z590A. I always like try to find a, a reason to use this. This RAM is not cheap, but man, is it pretty. And this is that DDR4, this is that Team T4 Extreme. This is the Intel 670P. Uh, this is their TLC, their latest TLC stuff. So this is Intermax's new AquaFusion all-in-one cooler. We're using our uh, V750 Gold White Edition. And then finally for our GPU, I mean, just one of the best looking uh, white uh, GPUs. This is the Gigabyte Vision RTX 3060. Pop this out, there we go. Just pop this underneath and boom, there it goes. Like that, pop it down and then you can just rotate this and then that holds it. That's all there is to it. Okay, there is all of our connections here. Pull brackets, which is always nice. So there's our tempered glass. We're just gonna pull this off. You know, you got a dust filter at the top as well. So we'll get that out of the way. It pops off. Okay, let's go ahead and get our motherboard in and go from there. Very light. Okay, well, that's already a problem. You're gonna have to remove our fan to put our motherboard in. And it's gonna be the second one, right? Yep, the second one. Okay, so we're gonna have to remove this one here. Oh, looks like we're missing some, okay, another learn thing. Not set up for ATX. Let us quickly put our AIO together. So there we go, everything's kind of in parked, out of the way, it should look clean on the other side too. There it is right there, it looks good. Okay, that's nice. Went in pretty easily, that was cool. The, the, the PSU shroud actually has enough room that it's not gonna rip your HD audio cable out. Build is done, there it is right there, nice and small. Looks good in the, looks good in all angles. Okay, here we go. On and on. There it is.
If you remember my review of the NX800, you're going to hear some of the same things from me when it comes to the build experience in this case as it was in that case. First off, when you pop off the back of a case and you are literally welcomed by a spaghetti mess of cables, that is never a good sign. The other thing is, is frankly, during my installation, or maybe even before I got the case, the Molex for the rear 120 was damaged, and therefore disabling RGB for every fan in the case. Which, I get this is supposed to be a budget case, but Antec does not sell replacement fans, and so if you have the same thing happen to you, you're at the beck and call of their customer support to get replaced. Oh, and Molex, that's already minus five DKP. Okay, enough about the fans. There are some things that just quite aren't right about this case. Like for instance, removing the rear guards for the PCI expansion slots. I was stumped for a little bit because they were in there super securely. Like it felt like they were glued, which I mean, if you were new to builds, you might think, wow, maybe these don't come out. And then you just start crying for hours because you can't finish your build because you didn't think they actually came out. I get cheap, but don't make it unfunctional. Another odd thing is like the standoffs and the rear fan. And I'll talk about the rear fan here in a minute, but I'm not sure what the heck motherboard they were setting up for by default. But I mean, it must be like some indie mobo because it doesn't fit any like normal configuration out here. Finally, and one thing that it just bothered me is that you may potentially have to remove the rear exhaust fan to put in the motherboard. I know it may not seem like much, but with all the other little things, this kind of adds up. You should be able to just slide the motherboard in with the keyword being should. Okay, I know I said finally, but I have one more gripe worth mentioning. There are a lot of big holes in this case, especially in the back, and not where you need them, like below the motherboard, by the way. And the lack of rubber grommets exacerbates just how big these holes really are. This placement does not make cable management easy at all, which kind of sucks. And I just don't see anything in this case that makes it special enough to warrant this much budget in the budget case. I mean, when you look at the NX800, which you can check out the full review of right here, at least you had 200 millimeter fans that were eating up some of the budget. But with these terrible fans that are all daisy chained to obviously save money, I'm not sure that cutting this many quarters makes sense. I mean, when you look at like the $60 Montec Air 100 that comes with four RGB fans, none of which are Molex, rubber grommets, and other premium features for less, I, I guess I just don't see how it makes sense to make this case feel and look so cheap. So summarize your rant, Roby, why, why does it matter? Well, it matters because a lot of people who are buying these cases are doing so to do their first build-in. They've been saving their hard-earned pennies and when they finally get home and start putting the build together, this case isn't doing them any favors and maybe even making their initial experience of building the PC worse than it actually should be. Okay then, Roby, was there anything about the build experience you actually liked? Sure, to be honest, outside of the little laundry list of issues at the beginning, the rest of the build is actually pretty straightforward. You can top mount a 240 millimeter AIO pretty easily, which I'm always happy when you can top mount an AIO. Cable management, though more difficult than it should be, still was provided with ample room to be done, and the inclusion of a removable drive tray was also really nice. I mean, building in the PC, when you get to the point of just putting components in, is actually pretty standard once you fix that weird standoff issue, but there's just a lot of budget in this budget case that has me scratching my head, especially because just fixing a few of these would elevate this case a ton, and given it's not a bad looking case from the exterior, it has the potential to be more than what it is. Okay, so enough about the build experience, maybe the NX410 will make up for it in the thermals department. Well, let's find out, shall we? So the thermals in the NX410 in a positive pressure configuration using the Antec fans that came stock with the case, we replaced them with QL fans post the review for B-roll were as follows. We were using an Intel 11th Gen 11600K, which I'm excited to see about how this game actually performs with the paired GPU we did, was cooled with an Intermax Aquafusion 240 millimeter AIO. Now I'm not expecting this to be a struggle bus at all for this AIO, especially if this case has the airflow it's expected to. So starting off with our CPU, things are looking beautiful and frosty with our idle sitting at 27 degrees in the open case scenario and 29 in the closed case. So far, so good. However, the good news kind of stops there. When we start cranking up the juice with our ID64 test, we see our temps jump in our 11600K to 81 in the open case scenario and 89 degrees in the closed case scenario. Well, what about the GPU, Roby? Is that better? Well, in short, yes. 
At idle, our Gigabyte Vision RTX 3060 is sitting at 31 degrees in the open case scenario and a similarly cool 35 degrees in the closed case scenario. Now when we turn it up though and take it to 11, we see the GPU get up to a nice and manageable 63 in the open case scenario and a few degrees higher to 67 in the closed case. So healthy and cool, about what I expected. So what does this mean, Roby? Does this mean the thermals in the case suck? No, I don't think so, to be honest. I think what we're looking at here is another Intermax AIO fail. And as much as I like the look of the white Aquafusion, it appears that its performance has something to be desired. When you see GPU temps like what we're seeing, then the issue isn't the case, it's more than likely the cooler. So I'm giving the thermals in the NX410 a pass. So build experience was meh, thermals look to be fine. We've heard a lot about the 11600 case. How did this little build I put together do when I ran it through the gamut of games? Well, I'm glad you asked. First up, it's our single player NVIDIA RTX experiences for this Gigabyte Vision RTX 3060 paired with an Intel 11th Gen 11600K. For Tomb Raider running at 1440p with DLSS set on the highest preset, we saw an average frame rate of 92 across all of our runs that we did on the game. So no issue there. For Metro Exodus, also running at 1440p with ray tracing on high and DLSS set to balance, we saw an average FPS across all of our runs of 40.6. It looks like if we want to see that number at 60, we're either turning down settings or having to drop down to 1080p. Now, let's talk about some AMD experiences because we want to actually see how this performs for AMD-centric experiences. First up, let's talk about Dirt 5. Running at 1440p with ultra-high graphic settings, we saw an average frame rate of 66.2 right on the cusp of 60 frames per second, but also lots of headroom to keep north of 60 if things continue to look the way they are, which I think will be fine. Lastly, and rounding out the single player experiences was Borderlands 3 running at the highest preset, we saw an FPS average of 53.5, which like Metro looks to mean we're either turning down graphical settings or going down to 1080p, if you want to at least have that 60 FPS bar be met. So what about MP games? Well, for Apex Legends running a low visual settings at 1440p, optimized for competitive gameplay, and high FPS, we saw an average frame rate of 135.1 across our multiple gaming sessions, which isn't surprising given this is a 3060. Now finally, for Fortnite, again at 1440p on low visual settings, set for competitive, we're sitting at a very fluid and high 294.5 FPS, which is great. So again, mixed bag on performance at 1440p, which isn't surprising given this is a 3060 and it's really targeted at 1080p gaming and looking to be buying for both MP and single player experiences in either case if you're wanting to game at that resolution. So wrapping it all up in a pretty little Molex bow. Man, that would be a bow from HE double hockey sticks is what my kids would say. But wrapping it all up, this case is cheap. And it feels that way when you build in it. It felt like death from a thousand cuts, which made the build from mediocre to poor to build in. However, the look of the case is actually pretty nice, albeit it's weirdly proportioned, and if you're willing to look past those shortfalls, you could have something clean and beautiful at the end. Now, temps are fine. I would even gander more than fine if we replaced that AIO with like one of those new white Krakens from NZXT. And I'm sure we wouldn't see temps like what we saw in our testing. So if you're really gonna go get the NX410, I hope I'm giving you some issues and things to plan for that are just gonna make your experience building in this case that much better. Now, if you aren't just totally into the case, you know what, I really suggest looking elsewhere like the Fantex P360A. It's the same price, has none of the compromises, and looks super slick and awesome. But enough about what I think, what do you think? Do you think the review was spot on? Were there bits I was a little too harsh on? Is this a case you had your eye on? Would love to know all of that down in the comments below. Now, while you're down there, make sure you slap that subscribe button, whip that like button, and ring that notification bell so you get a notification each and every time we post a new video or go live with our awesome live stream shows. Anyway, guys, super appreciate you sticking through to the end of the video, and I'm excited to bring you into the next one.